What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE teases that disappointingly went nowhere. We've seen it a few times in WWE where they tease something and it's you know there's a little bit excitement potentially of a, a future matchup, and then something happens and it doesn't go nowhere. Like maybe you know the the talent depending on the booking situation it doesn't go anywhere like it's it's things happen you know so maybe someone's schedule doesn't align or maybe someone wants more money and they feel like they're not getting paid enough or maybe and we've seen this a few times vince mcmahon decides to do something else and completely abandon the whole idea of what potentially could happen it's happened before so we're gonna check out some of them instances where we thought we were gonna maybe get something special and then it ultimately turned out to be nothing. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Let's get right into this one, man. Common practice for WWE to tease future storylines and characters on Raw or SmackDown. This is done to whet the appetite of fans and give them a subtle hint of what's to come in the future months. Over the years, WWE has been prone to deliver a tease and that tease ends up leading to absolutely nowhere. Yeah. Whilst the tease itself can be quickly erased from the memory of the fans, often the tease is for something truly epic and WWE are called out for failing to deliver any type of meaningful follow-up. This isn't always WWE's fault as the nature of pro wrestling means that things can change in a moment's notice and mm -hmm. WWE can be forced to go back to the drawing board and cancel what was going to be an exciting and compelling creative direction. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE teasers that went absolutely nowhere. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new website WrestleMania.com. Subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already. Number 10, Triple H versus Bray Wyatt. I forgot about this. Teasing a heel versus this. heel rivalry is oh, always risky man. because the fans Rest may be peace, confused Bray. to who they're exactly supposed to be rooting for. However, when WWE teased Triple H versus Bray Wyatt in early 2016, oh. the reaction from fans was a clear indication that this was a match and a feud that they wanted to see. Oh my God, that, oh. They had so many options that year. They had more options than what they wanted to emit. Roman Reigns wasn't the only option, by the way. He wasn't, but, you know. The tease itself took place on March 7th, 2016 edition of Raw. I forgot and about the this. family had annihilated Ambrose, reigning WWE champion Triple H's theme song would hit. Before Wyatt exited the ring, a stare down between he and the game ensued, uh. and the crowd came alive. Why would even stroke Triple H's WWE title, potentially <laughs> hinting that he was coming for the game's gold? Oh, Unfortunately, man. WWE never had any plans to follow up the tease, and the two decorated stars never even got a featured feud in WWE. Well, loved Number it. nine, an intergender wrestling return. One of Dean Ambrose's final storylines in uh -huh. WWE was supposed to be a feud with Nia Jax. This would have seen WWE bring back intergender wrestling, and it was supposed to lead to a match between the two at a live event. WWE would heavily tease the matchup on Raw, yet it was apparent that both looked uncomfortable with what WWE had booked them to do. Uh -huh. According to Jackson, in an interview with Renee Paquette, the scripted teases led to utter confusion both from herself and Ambrose, and Ambrose was fully aware that WWE were trying to punish him just before he left the company. Yeah, you can you you can tell they were trying to just ruin his credibility and anything that any momentum he had, they were trying to destroy it, which I don't like. I think that's messed up, and I think that's part of the reason why he's probably going to be in AEW for life. They'll let him do whatever he wants over there, you know what I'm saying? But I just, I think what Vince did here was just not cool, bro. It wasn't. I remember getting the the um, script, and they were just like, yeah, you're going to come out. And, and I was like, so wait, am I going to start wrestling the guys? Like, and I'm like, what's going on here? And they're just like, yeah, you know, we think this is kind of cool. And I was like, mm, I don't know. And then I go to Dean, Dean, John, and I was just like, dude, I don't feel comfortable with this. Like, are you, how are you? And he was like, it's all right. You know him. He's like, it's all right, whatever, dude. It's like, yeah. he said, he's like, yeah, whatever. They're just trying to get me. And to me, I'm not the kind of person to where like if, in a wrestling thing, like, I just don't think I should be able to hit somebody and they don't get to hit me back. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Wow. Especially because it's the inner I can respect. I can respect Nia on that one, bro. I can respect that. I can. I can respect that. She says she doesn't really feel comfortable hitting someone and she knows they can't hit them back. Equal rights, equal fights. I respect that from Naya. I do. I really do. Entertainment thing. I thought it was sure. so weird. And I know John didn't feel comfortable. He's like, I don't want to 
I don't want to hit you. Yeah. Jax continued on saying, they had like advertised us on a live event. Yes. Having yeah. a match. And I was like, what the heck is going on here? I was like, are we, are we doing this? And I thought at first I was like, it's kind of cool to do intergender matches. Like that would be actually super cool if we can go that route. And if anybody who's amazing and has like an incredible resume, it's John. Yeah. But I'm like, does he want to do this? Is this what, is this where we're going? And then I don't know what happened. Somebody said like the state that we were supposed to be working in didn't allow intergender matches or some crap like that. I don't know. Oh, and wow. then it just went away. Number eight, AJ Styles. That was just all Vince just trying to stick it to John Moxley. Well, you know, Dean Ambrose at the time. That's really what it was. It was pointless. It's no no need for it. It was just them trying to fuck with him, which is it's fucked up. Goes rogue. In late 2018, I WWE had this. a segment which led to speculation that WWE were going to build towards a rivalry between AJ Styles and Vince McMahon. Yeah. In the segment, AJ and McMahon met backstage, and McMahon would pretend to be unaware of who exactly AJ was before claiming that he and AJ have similar traits. McMahon would declare that he wanted to see AJ's inner animal, and then in a dramatic moment, he would slap the former WWE champion across the face. AJ would then respond by laying Definitely in the neck. He didn't even hit his face. Laying out the WWE chairman with a vicious punch to the utter shock of fans worldwide. Bold, I remember watching that and I was like, okay, we're going to get something here. And they didn't do nothing, bro. I, I, I really thought they were going to do something there. Because he laid out Vince, bro. Ultimately, the segment and the tease of the feud between the two was quickly erased from the history books. As <laughs> WWE failed to mention the segment ever again. Number seven, Batista versus Brock Lesnar. A Batista versus Brock Lesnar is I'm surely sure a match and program one. that WWE would have booked at some point in time. Yet surprisingly, the two have never had an extended rivalry. This appeared like it was about to change in 2014 when WWE would tease a future rivalry yeah, between the two during okay. a segment on Raw. I vaguely and remember the response this. to the tease was overwhelmingly positive. During a promo exchange between Batista and Randy Orton, Lesnar along with Paul Heyman would interrupt and chaos would ensue. Heyman would inform authority figure Brad Maddox that Lesnar either wants a match with Orton or Batista. When the idea was thrown out that the fans may see Batista versus Lesnar, the mood changed in the arena and there was a tangible excitement. Mm -hmm. Sadly, the match never took place and with Batista officially retiring in 2019, there's now no chance that the match will ever take place in a WWE ring. Yeah, you know, that was a, a missed opportunity for sure. Number six, CM Punk versus Stone Cold Steve this Austin. This was cool too. One of the dream matches that fans uh... have always wanted to see is CM Punk versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. The two characters are vastly different, and this in turn would make for one compelling money-making feud. Yep. WWE successfully teased a dream match on two separate occasions. The first time was in 2011 during a memorable backstage segment on Raw, and the yep. two had a rather comedic interaction. The segment, as expected, received a noteworthy response from the crowd. The teasers for an eventual feud between this the two was continued cool too, when the two the took part in a sit-down interview with Jim Ross to promote WWE 13. This interview was intense and raw and it looked like both men were trying to sell a match rather than simply promote a video game. The interview received widespread praise yeah. and now there was even more buzz to see the match take place. I remember and ultimately, this. the match never happened and the promotional interview was the final time that the two legends would share the spotlight together. They were supposed to be selling a game and it looked like they were selling a match and I was for it. I was all for it, bro. Number five, who cost Finn Balor the universal title? It was common during the old era of WWE for the company mm -hmm. to make bold booking decisions and figure out the fallout at a later date. When WWE booked Demon Finn Balor vs. Roman Reigns for the Extreme Rules pay-per-view in 2021, they needed a way to protect Balor whilst keeping Reigns mm. as Universal Champion. WWE's idea was to have Balor about to perform his trademark coup de grace, only for the rope to magically snap out of nowhere. Magically. This was a unique finish and it was heavily teased that somebody was behind cutting the rope and fans hoped that this would be explored in the coming weeks and months. But nope. WWE never had any plans to explore the tease and the rope breaking was only implemented as a match finish to protect Balor's demon persona. Which was but stupid. Which was just dumb. That was dumb. You know who did it? The man upstairs. That's the only thing I can think of. Because <laughs> it just made no sense. It's one of the the few blunders of Roman Reigns' title uh, defenses. That match was fun, but then it, it started getting really comical and goofy very quickly. Footage from the fans in attendance made it clear that it was a production team member who cut the rope. And of course, it was only fitting that WWE received backlash for failing to follow up on what could have been a strong storyline for Balor's character. Stupid. Number four, time's up for Roman Reigns. Upon re Yep, they didn't do nothing here. 
Now they're trying to bring it back. Triple H is trying to bring it back. But when he kind of, they re-debuted him, I'm like, I like this. What they're going to do with this. They're teasing something. And then they just dropped it. And now they're trying to bring it back. But I don't think people care right now. So. Signing with WWE in 2022, Karrion Cross was instantly presented as a foil for Roman Reigns. Cross made his debut attacking Drew McIntyre <laughs> before placing an hourglass in the ring, and in the ring just so happened to be the Reigns and the Bloodline. Cross would then point to his wrist, signaling that time is up for Reigns and his historic title reign. But it goes without saying that this was an incredible return, and it made Cross look threatening within a few short minutes. The obvious tease was that WWE were going to book Cross vs Reigns, yet this never transpired. It's never been explained why WWE failed to book the match, and it's entirely possible that it's due to Cross's difficulty in connecting with the audience since returning to the company. Number 3, Legends yeah. Collide. As mentioned at the beginning of this- Here's the thing, I think they could have did it, I just don't know. He has to win feuds, he wasn't winning anything. He hasn't really won anything, but he's taking the claim of corrupting people and turning them rogue but he hasn't really won anything so it doesn't matter if you're causing people to go rogue after they face you you can't beat them so it doesn't matter he has to win stuff win noticeable matches noticeable feuds this video it can be the case that wwe has every intention of following up on a tease only for real life events to get in the way of their creative plans WWE would heavily tease The Rock vs. Triple H on a number of different occasions, including a memorable yep. segment on SmackDown in 2014, as well as an acclaimed segment at WrestleMania 31, which also included Ronda Rousey. These teasers were intended to build towards WrestleMania 32, as WrestleMania in Dallas was going to see the two legends face off for one final time. During an interview with TalkSport, the mm. game revealed that the match was cancelled due to the scheduling conflicts with The Rock. I don't remember the details of it, but it was one of those things that The Rock and I talked about to the point where we did the backstage promo. Let's throw a scene out there and see what happens. It blew up, so we talked about it some more. Then scheduling just got in the way. At that point, we were over a year away from that WrestleMania. It wasn't until maybe four months of the following year we got to that, and Rock goes, it's just not going to work. I just can't. All of my stuff, my movies and everything has changed. I just can't make it work anymore. It was what it was. I would love to have done it. It would have been a blast to step in there with him one more time and tear it up. Number I would have preferred that than what we got. So I definitely would have preferred Triple H and The Rock one more time. I would have preferred that. Preferred that than what we end up getting that year. So to Seth Rollins' babyface turn. The 2022 Royal Rumble saw former Shield brothers collide as Roman Reigns this defended the Universal too. title against this Seth Rollins. Outside of a lackluster DQ finish, the match was excellent as the chemistry between the two was incredible and the post-match angle led to an exciting tease for future storylines. so good. Once the match was over, Reigns brutalized Rollins with a steel chair to the shock and horror of 40,000 plus fans in attendance. It's worth noting that Rollins was still firmly a heel at this point, uh -huh. and this was seemingly supposed to tease a babyface turn and tease the idea of Rollins coming after Reigns for revenge. Although Rollins has been absolutely annihilated, his character brushed it aside the next time he appeared on WWE yeah. TV. It was disappointed to see that there was no babyface turn and there was no desire from Rollins to exact revenge. Yeah, and that's the only thing about that. I, I would just say they should have probably turned on babyface sooner eventually it ended up happening in the long run but they should have did that that would have been a nice catalyst to turn him babyface and number one hulk hogan versus stone cold steve austin yeah the wwe had numerous chances this deserves to, to be at the top hogan of the list versus stone cold steve austin in 2002 yet due to a variety of reasons the match never took place it appeared like all hope was lost in seeing the two icons of WWE collide, but that was until 2005, when the teases for a match between the two began to surface. The first tease was at the Raw Homecoming show in 2005, when during a promo from Hogan, out of nowhere, Hogan would call out Austin and outright challenge him to a dream match. This received a gigantic response, and logic would assume that Hogan wouldn't tease the match in such a direct manner if WWE weren't actually going to deliver it. Uh -huh. The next tease came at the Hall of Fame ceremony in 2006, Austin was inducting Bret Hart and Austin would briefly divert away from focusing on Hart to addressing Hogan on the stage by stating, you know it's funny, I was uh, going through my bag in the back, I couldn't find something, I lost something, I went into the back looking through my bag and I found a can of whoop ass and it had Hulk Hogan's name on it. <laughs> Although the teasers created significant buzz, they ended up leading to nothing and yeah. the two never had a 1v1 matchup in WWE. But there you have it folks, 10 W- I still think that would have been a, the biggest match of all time bro. And it was supposed to potentially happen, but creative differences. People couldn't decide who goes over. If I'm Hulk, I do the job for Stone Cold.
I did a job for Stone Cold. Simple as that. That's just me. I know egos get involved. I do the job for Stone Cold. Because he carried the torch after Hulk Hogan left. After Hulk Hogan, you know, before he went to WCW and stuff like that. Well, after he went to WCW, he carried the torch. He put WWE on his back. Him and obviously The Rock and everybody else. But Stone Cold was the guy. So, comment down below. Let me know some other potential dream matches and uh, uh, potential uh, dope storylines that could have could have been if you know WWE would have went through or plans would have fell through. If they weren't on this list, there's a few that could have you know that possibly could have been on this list or should have been on this list. But I know you guys can think of some where you're like, damn, I wish that would have happened. Like potentially a Sting versus Undertaker. I would have loved to have seen that, bro. That could have been possibly cool. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K. And I'm still going to speak to YouTube Wrestling Champion World. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See y'all on the next one. Peace.